Welcome, Dr. James Beckett, Sports Card Insights. This episode's a conversation between me and Kyle Robertson, DallasCardShow.com. I really enjoyed Kyle's shows. It's great to live in this area and have really outstanding shows again. It's been, it's been too long, but uh, lately, Kyle's really on a roll. This is a candid conversation between us. Thanks, sponsors, Top Spinini, Upper Deck, Heritage Auctions, Huggins and Scott Auctions, Mike Stadium Sports Cards, Burbank Sports Cards, ComC.com, Beckett Media, Beckett Grading, Beckett Authentication. So thanks, everybody, and enjoy the conversation between me and Kyle. Here it is. And again, thanks, Kyle, for all your hard work to promote the hobby. We have a new sponsor, so we're going all out on this one as far as local advertising promoters. You have to be responsible with your local market and make sure you're getting new collectors in there. That's that's our focus for this one. You're basically trying to improve your show each time. You're seeing that you don't need to be as dependent on the autograph signers, but you got some great dealers in there and create an atmosphere where there's a lot of buy-sell trade. That's, a, that's the buzz you have to have. Everybody wants in the big room. I'm going to call it the wedding room, the 13,000 square foot room. That's you're walking through the door there. We have a DJ there. On Friday, we'll have the block packs. They'll have the open bar up there and between 7 and about 10 o'clock. They're bringing Spud Web, Web out. It's brand new uh, what they're going to be offering. It's brand new brand complicated. <laughs> how do I, you know what? when do I find out if I won? <laughs> What's instant? I guess what they're doing is recreating the randomizer. This is uh, what I'm seeing from the. I've been enjoying your shows. And are you settling in on six or eight weeks apart of having five, six shows a year? Yeah, six weeks apart is what we've done this year. We have August 26th through 29th, which right. you already know about. We have five scheduled next year, and then we'll take a month off for national. We'll be doing some 100 table shows over and around the FW airport. So, Like that airport, Marriott? Are you considering that like a pop-up show? Or are you advertising that not as much? Or We will be advertising that going forward. The problem is... If you start getting them overcrowded, especially during COVID, you make people uncomfortable. I wanted the, the strong sports card collectors coming in to spend money. I want to expand the hobby. We're going to concentrate more locally with some of the radio stations. And Do you have an email list? Because I, I was looking <laughs> on your Dallas Card Show website. I guess you could request to be informed. Whenever I get inquiries, we pull those inquiry emails. If somebody wants to be on the mailing list, they can actually request or if they have questions, we always pull that in. And then Facebook and Instagram, those are so easy to use now. The social media I use is called Rich Klein. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rich does a good job. He sends out emails for us too. He's awesome. Going forward, you're going to have these occasional 100 table things at the airport Marriott and then five or six a year of the bigger shows. Yeah. And and my plan is every other month to have a show. We either have the large show or the, the 100 table at DFW Airport, right. just yeah. south of it. I really want to affirm that you've made the dealers the stars. It's not about the venue. The venue needs to be reasonable, but if people are coming not for some super duper autograph guest or because mm -hmm. there's some promos being passed out, they're coming because you got a really strong group of dealers who are bringing good stuff. Exactly. That's what I always thought. When I was a kid growing up, Wanda used to throw those shows over in Arlington. And uh, I always thought that Dallas Fort Worth should be almost like the hub of collectibles, three hours away from every airport. And Anybody can get here. And they were coming. So August potentially could be bigger than July. I think it'll be. Yes. I, uh, with national coming up, several of our vendors, you only have so many vacation weeks a year. And so they're taking vacation. We're still full, though. I, I think our attendance will be the same. I think the attendance will be strong, but I like the idea of having more than one room when the rooms are thematically or topically organized. There's a non-sport or a comic and Pokemon room, and there's a vintage room. Yeah, I would like it as a customer, but sometimes the vendors all want to be in that main room. They because think, it is but like Rich uh, Klein was saying, he may do better in that quieter room that's more vintage. There's so many good dealers there that you've got to case the place when you come in, and that's not as easy to do when there's more than one room. If I'm thinking about where did I see that card, finding them in the middle of a huge room is harder than knowing, hey, they were in the corner of that smaller room. The wedding room is right across from the bar. They'll have a DJ in there and we'll put our autograph guests in there. That's going to be a little louder than it has been. We're hoping that caters to the breakers coming through and 
Right. And uh, we'll do some breaking out in that room. It also has better internet reception in there. So that's another benefit we have. You also could demand pricing, like wall tables sometimes are more than interior tables and tables in the smaller room might be less or more depending on where you are. Newfield uh-huh. has a fabulous table. You just walk in, he's right there. Yes. He certainly paid his dues. I love your loyalty to the dealers that have been with you for a long time. Yeah, and sometimes that's a little difficult because you get tempted. But those are the guys that brought this show to this point. This, this is their show. That's the reason people have the demand for those tables up front. People that are flying in from California, it's one of the hard things is the guys that are flying in for the five shows a year or whatever it is. And so if they have to miss one, I have to keep their spots for them. If somebody's coming to four out of five of your shows from out of state, I'd really want to try to make it work for them. Oh, man, they talk us up and... Yeah, there's as good of advertising as anything right. out there that I do. We, we take care of those guys. What about trade night? Do you encourage that? or How do you assist with that? I'll, I'll tell you how that came about. That first show we did after COVID, it was a little bit over 200 tables. So we've tripled since then, but but we had a little bit of congestion in the back unloading. So the hotel said, well, y'all can unload on Thursday night. So we encouraged everybody to come in on Thursday night and just made it a trade night. The last trade night on Thursday was, it's what I normally see on a Friday, just people coming in from everywhere. We've had some celebrities come in on Thursdays, and I think Stevie Aoki was out wearing his gas mask one time and walking around on Thursday and Friday. I definitely want to have that available for them and encourage them to come in to Dallas, Fort Worth, spend, spend money at our card shops and see where our card shops are and make sure that we're uh, being good hosts, giving them any, every opportunity to trade baseball cards. The feedback I get from out of state is they love the hallways there inside the hotel that they, they can all get out and trade. And if you go out three o'clock in the morning, Raymond, who, who's our security guard, he took a picture out there one, one night at 3.30 in the morning. It was just packed. It was incredible. The, the card market's pretty strong. Hopefully it continues. I still think it will. Are you raising your prices on dealer tables or trying to keep them pretty level? I try to keep them level. You've got so, a, a product that's in demand. But the other thing I noticed is that your VIP pass went down in price. Yeah, as people coming in from out of state, it just you have a little bit slow down on that. And I think that's because of the Chicago National out there. I wanted to encourage the VIP. Plus, we okay. put it out a little bit later so we could finish up with our uh, main sponsor. We just want everybody in that we can get in. Money is something that ha- helps us with the show, but it's definitely not my yeah. uh, number one big money uh, priority with this. The whole thing about card shows that you've learned and you've worked your way through and up is there has to be some equilibrium there. It has to be good for the dealers and good for the customers and good for the promoter too and any Mm -hmm. sponsors and all that. So if it's working, everybody goes away happy. I see a lot of smart kids coming into the hobby and love what they're doing. I'm what they're learning the basics of, I call it e-cardnomics. As I see them coming in and actually learning and Facebook and, and all the means of advertising and then eBay. I love that aspect. They're getting an advantage going forward in life. It's amazing. If you go in there and there seems to be a crowd all over, but no long lines. And when you go to the national and some shows, there's clusters of people like around the corporate booths or the autographs where they're standing in line half the day. Yes. You don't seem to have that as much. I I want people to be able to circulate. So you don't really have the sponsors that have long lines unless it's over in that other room. I have that four years. That's where I Um, keep all that going on that other room. I think that's going to be more of a sponsorship type room to where we can actually start going forward with some of that. And of course you have all these grading companies that are coming out now and, and they're all willing to come to the shows to put out their product. They're willing to set out in the halls and There's everything. There's a lot of traffic, a lot of walking by, a lot of eyeballs. A lot of eyeballs. You seem really even keel. Even when I see it, it, you know, during the show, you're pretty easy going. But did people make you <laughs> mad or angry or is it smooth? You have smooth sailing. Yeah, I used to work real jobs in, in life and, and I'm just blessed to do sports cards for a living. My worst day at a card show is better than my best day at work. I just love it. And whenever I see somebody that's angry or they're mad or something like that, I always put it in perspective that, hey, they're at a card show and they're mad. There's something that's really bad. I try to take care of them as best as we can. The vendors, there's a lot of politics with that, but the customers, I don't have a whole lot of complaints from those guys. We try to keep our autograph guests 
prices down and the sponsorships. There's opportunities in there for tables, but we try to keep them for the guys that have been there. You have a lot of people that help. Are they employees or just people that kind of contract? Because it, it seems to run pretty smooth and pretty simple, but it doesn't seem like you have large staff, but you have people that you trust that, that help you with stuff. Yeah, you know what? Hopefully they don't hear all this. There are people that just hung around the shows and vendors that set up and they just love cards and they were just always just helping. And yeah, we definitely share with those guys. We've been blessed. And, and that's one of the things is to grow the show to the point. I, I really don't like having outside people just hiring straight in. I, I like having them come in. And of course, I have a lot of listing here to do at the shop. And so we do a lot of listing. And so that's how we break people in. Most of the people that help us at the shows do it because they love it. We share with those guys too. So we make sure that they're compensated. So do you consider yourself mainly a promoter that has a card shop? Or are you a card shop guy that does promoting? I'll tell you what my job is. My job is to create demand for sports cards. That is my number one job 100% and whatever that takes. We have a small grading company that we've had for years, but we see the demand for quick, fast turnarounds. Like I say, we moved our shop just right across from the show, just on 75. People can turn something in today and get it back tomorrow for $10 with a grade in a slab. So we just want to assist the hobbyist because 10 years from today, I want to be doing the same thing and creating demand for more people to come into the hobby. I think with that attitude, you probably will be. However, the Waters Creek location, I think is a good location. But you have to be thinking about other possibilities. Is that are you <laughs> still evaluating? Because that's a really good location. I wouldn't leave unless you found something really better. Yeah, I would prefer being here at Waters Creek. Maybe eventually we get into where we're doing a, a big show, maybe once a year. But for right now, the issue we have right now is the, is the sponsorship level. This is the problem. I do what I love to do. I love the card show. So whenever you're seeing cards in that big room. That, that's because that's purposely what I love. The autograph guests are, are something that actually gives me reasons to advertise, but going to the next level, that's where we would have to find a little bit bigger. I don't know you have so. to, but that's the conventional wisdom. You need yeah. to have some appeal to people, but the cards are in the news so much now. Yeah. There ought to be media outlets that pick up on what you're doing and TV stations that ought to cover it. They'd come out Thursday or Friday and cover it so that people would show up on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's a great idea. I have the, the guys from 105.3. The, these TV stations, the radio stations can't do on-site broadcasting because a lot of these TV stations are owned by, I guess they're in California or stricter COVID rules than we are in Texas. For example, 105.3, the fan, they still can't come out and do a public appearance. But we have people that love cards. I didn't promote their station or, or pay them for advertising. I just I want to pay the guys that are actually coming out and uh, that love cards. So that they promote it from within, genuine. Do you feel like your social media push is your own or so many other people are taking the ball and running with it and broadcasting mm -hmm. from the show and are, are you motivating that or are you just allowing it to happen and getting a benefit because yeah, there are all yeah. kinds of camera crews at your shows? Yeah, the first larger shows, they would ask if they could do social media because I, I don't think that most shows actually encourage that. If they're doing social media at, their, at the show, then they get press passes. I was on uh, YouTube yesterday with somebody that hadn't really looked. I said, just look up Dallas Card Show on YouTube and it just kept on going, kept sure. on. I'm guessing a thousand or more videos out there of the shows. Yeah, I'd call that just blessing. We do have a media guy that that does a lot of our work here, mostly on Instagram. I'm sure we have a long way to go on that too. I've stayed away from YouTube just because so many people are on they're it. They're doing it for you, Kyle. And it's more natural when they're doing it. It doesn't look like an institutionalized commercial. In fact, I didn't sign any releases or anything, but I'm watching on YouTube and I'm thinking, wait a minute, that's me in the picture. And they didn't say anything because my, my side was to the camera. I was just sitting down. I thought, wait a minute, I'm in the backdrop. <laughs> it's fine with me. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Somebody asked us to put out more signs, making sure people know that it's possible their own video. There's a lot of games to be played. My goal in my podcast is just to you know level the playing field, just like it's always been, to give collectors and dealers a chance to come together and enjoy the hobby, and they both profit in their own way. 